Hey all you mentees, Uncanny Omar here. And today, join me for an advanced look at this Uncanny X-Force reprint from Marvel Comics. We're gonna do a quick comparison to the original printing, and then we'll talk a little bit about the plot and where it fits in a reading order of X-Force, or X-Men titles, rather. So please stay tuned. As always, before I get started, I'd like to thank David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this book. And the book will be released to the direct market on March 4th. And the direct market, of course, are comic book stores and places like CheapGraphicNovels.com, In Stock Trades, Tales of Wonder, places like that. Now, really quick, what I wanted to do is showcase some of these books back here. Um, because while you can read this, it stands on its own. You don't have to read anything. You, ha you don't even have to read X-Men to enjoy this. But I did want to... But for those of you that are completest and have to read everything in chronological order i don't mind talking a little bit about that so this is the original x-force it came out in the 90s that's cable's team and then eventually it kind of ended with ecstatics that's where that ended and then we had this series that spun out of uh new x-men by kyle and yost this is x-force these are the oversized hardcovers they're also available in complete collections and uh, honestly i think the oversized hardcovers are out of print right now but uh, you can still find them on the cheap from time to time. Now, during the series, there were events like Messiah War and Necrotia and also. And it all came to a head with this crossover event right here known as Second Coming. It was a crossover with Uncanny X-Men, X-Men Legacy, and X-Force. And it's during this event that this doesn't really give anything away. Uh, this is where the new Uncanny X-Force team is formed. And, of course, this is Wolverine, but it's not the first time we've had an espionage Black Ops team. Uh, that's what I wanted to make clear. Now, let's talk about this book. And we have to do a comparison. So let's look at that first. This is the original printing right here. It came out in 2014. And this is the new printing that comes out on March 4th. Cover looks identical. By the way, there wasn't a direct market cover before. There wasn't a variant. Uh, and there isn't now. There's the spine. Identical. One thing I do need to clarify is about the price. And that is that the original one was $99.99. And I said that Marvel was not raising the price. However, they did. This one's $100. So they raised it by a penny. I am a damn liar. And I apologize for that. Uh, no, but that's pretty cool. And honestly, even the font looks very similar. Uh, it's a little brighter on my copy right here. Um, the, but everything else is the same, like the picture. Uh, the parental advisory has moved. The Marvel logo is on the left-hand side instead of above it. And of course, the ISBN number has to be different. Now, let's look at it under the dust jacket. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay, I like that. So the new version is all black, while the original version is white. Oh man, they're trying to get at the completest over here that like to collect these books. Very similar, with the exception of the colors. Oh, that's okay. That's really cool. So, my original and the new printing. Okay, so let's get this new printing opened. There's a nice picture of Archangel. Here is the table of contents how the book is divided. And before we go any further, I always like to give these people credit. These are the people that put the book together and eventually reprinted the book. So you have Jennifer Grunewald, Caitlin O'Connell, Kateri Woody, uh, Mark Beasley, and Jeff Youngquist. And then the book design by Jared Fletcher. And of course, David forming the head. That's a Voltron reference. I'm sure all of you know that. So it kicks off with the first day of the rest of your life, which is kind of an introduction to these characters and let's look over here because the apocalypse solution is the very first story arc we're going to look at so while i flip through some of these pages of this jerome opeña's artwork i will tell you just a little bit about the book and the creators behind it Let me move it down here a little bit so you can see it so rick remender was the writer as a matter of fact he is the one that wrote all of this and by all of this i mean this Uncanny X-Force series. There was a follow-up to this, but it has nothing to do with this. Uh, so this collects Uncanny X-Force 1 through 35, 5.1, 19.1, uh, material from Wolverine, The Road to Hell, 
and All New Wolverine Saga, and then the X-Ban Spotlights, just materials from that, which is what you saw at the beginning. Let's flip a little more through here so we can look at this beautiful Jerome Pena artwork. Uh, so Rick Remender is the guy that wrote it. He's known for the books like Fear Agent and Tokyo Ghost, Deadly Class, Crawl Space, which is a collection of stuff that he's written in the horror genre, Black Science, Low. I mean, the guy has been writing books, independent books for a long time, but this is his kind of first take at an X-Men title, um, Superheroes. And he does a phenomenal job. I love the way that he re-envisioned the Four Horsemen of Apocalypse. Of course, that also has to do with the artists he's teamed up with, which is Jerome Pena. Uh, we also have Leonardo Manco and Rafael Albuquerque as at Ribic. All these names may be familiar to you. Mark Brooks is in here. Speaking of Mark Brooks. So I'm not going to be talking about spoilers, but I have to talk about this team. Why do we need this team of X-Men? So this team is, and I say X-Men because it's really not X-Force, right? It's really like a Black Ops X-Men team. So this team is doing things that the regular X-Men team will not do, which is mainly kill. So there's a lot of questioning in here. It's like, when is it okay to kill? Is it okay to kill to save a life? Is it okay to kill to prevent millions of lives from dying? So there's all that throughout all this book. Um, and the book is spread out like half of the book is the Dark Angel Saga everything leading up to the Dark Angel Saga which we're getting here and then there's other stories later on throughout the book but I think to me the book kicked off with such a high note like I don't think I think before this I had this idea that I didn't think like independent comic book writers were that good at writing X-Men it's just because it's I've been heartbroken before and a lot of the oh Billy Tan also does some of the artwork uh, Greg Tonichi, who joined him on low. Um, but that's mainly because a lot of the time, the writers that wrote independent comic books uh, sometimes didn't know what to do with these X titles or work with editors that like to jump in and be like, no, you can't do that, or we can't use that character because so-and-so. But he made it work. That first arc, the Apocalypse Suite, oh my gosh, like that is one of the most brilliant openings to any comic book, not just an X-Men comic book. This storyline right here, and I'm sorry, it's the Apocalypse Solution. This is what I was talking about. And it, it's just the perfect opening to a comic book because it's literally, you have this new team of espionage, Black Ops, X-Men. So you have Wolverine, Archangel, Psylocke, Phantom X, and they're joined by the Merc with a Mouth, Deadpool. And pretty much the first mission is to go and kill Kid Apocalypse. That's their first mission. I'm not going to tell you where that ends or what that leads to, but man, that is dark. Like to go and kill a kid that will eventually become Apocalypse. That it it's brilliant and it's dark. Uh, eventually, I think like you get characters like Deathlock and Nightcrawler that join, but for the most part, that is the main team, and it's all led by Wolverine. I think he does an amazing job of writing Psylocke. That's this is one of my favorite takes on Psylocke. And Archangel. Archangel is such a convoluted character, and his arc during the Dark Angel saga is just phenomenal. Uh, Wolverine, you know, he's overall a badass looking after the team, so he's he's Wolverine. I mean, there's not much more that you can do to Wolverine to make him more of a badass. Phantom X and Deadpool kind of remind me a lot of each other, where Phantom X is like sarcastic, but he's he holds his own, where he's less funny. And Deadpool, most writers, when they write Deadpool, they do this thing where they try to be over the top and funny, but Remender balances that funny with like just some really quick little quips, and that's about it. Because there's a serious tone to this book. I mean, they're, they're out there killing mutants and other people. So I wanted to point that out, that I think it's a wonderful read. And I know it's not a review of the book, but I did want to... In case those people are on the fence, they're like, ah, what is this about? I'm not really familiar with these characters, or I'm not really sure about this title. I've never read an X title. You don't have to have read an X title to enjoy this. In all the books that I showed you earlier, you don't have to have read any of those to enjoy this. Because this is a standalone story. It's wonderful. And yes, there is a follow-up to this in Uncanny Avengers, uh, where you, well, I can't tell you who you see, but 
it's it stands on its own and it has an, a beginning and an ending now one thing i will say because i'm sure if you buy this based on what i've been talking about you're gonna be like wait a minute so it kicks off with probably one of the best story arcs of any x title i've ever read and then it takes a little bit of a dip but then it comes back up i'm not gonna lie like it takes a little bit of a dip during well i don't know maybe some people like the other world this the storyline right here but for me I uh, was just like, how can you go from such a kick-ass story to this? And I don't know. But then he came back up, like I said, um, towards the later part, the third act. But that first half of the book, man, it will keep you on the edge of your seats. It's so good. All right. I think I've gone on long enough about that. Let's look at the extras in the back. So we'll look at some of these extras. Not all, because I want you all to be surprised. And we have some variant covers. This book is 928 pages, by the way. Oh, I love these connecting covers. I wish I... This is uh, Nick Bradshaw. These were variants of the all new... Was it all new Marvel age or something like that? Whenever they revamped the books. Here's a little bit of the script. And the process of Jerome Pena's wonderful artwork. But it's not the only one in the book. I think there's a few people I named after that. There's that ribic, the process of inks and colors, and then the color wash, and then the history. Oh, look, you didn't even need me to do the history. I forgot they put this in here. This is the history of X-Force. This is uh, the stuff that was found on the Wolverine saga, all new Wolverine saga. Then this catches you up, honestly. So if you buy this and don't want to listen to the first couple minutes of this video, just go all the way to the back and look at the history of X-Force. That will give, give you an idea of where to begin reading this. Let's look back here. Dark Forces and Black Ops. It's articles. Here we go. This is the stuff I love to see. Just penciled pages. Man. I wish Jerome Opinion had drawn the whole thing. Kind of like uh, Joss Whedon and John Cassidy on Astonishing X-Men. Greg Tonici's pages. Phil Noto. I forgot Phil Noto is also in here. Uh, and if you're not familiar with Phantom X, he was a character that was created by Grant Morrison. Um, and really didn't have a spotlight, but I think Remender really makes him stand out. And there's Rafael Grandpa. Now, let's look at the binding really quick. You could probably tell as I was flipping through here, and if you're used to the Marvel way, that the book it has sewn binding. Uh, there is the eye. Let's do a comparison. It's my original one up here and the new printing. So you could tell the eye is... Jeez... It's overcompensating, I think. Uh, and then this is the new one. So let's take a comparison of pages really quick. You have the original printing up at the top and the new printing down here. Um, the colors are more vibrant in the new printing. And let's see what else. The differences are that you could probably tell there's that little bit of that gutter uh, curve I talked about on the page. Not very much. Uh, I talked about that during the Astonishing X-Men comparison video. Really doesn't affect anything. It folds over nice. You can still read it. I'm trying to find a splash page towards the beginning, but I don't think there's that many. And I don't want to give away the plot by going to the splash page. So let's see if I can find another one. We can look at this one. This is the original printing and the new printing. As you can tell, there was even some gutter loss back in the original printing. But keep in mind, I have read this book twice and it's this omnibus format. Uh, this one I just broke open and I got the spine opened up. So there's a little bit of gutter loss right there. But the further you go in the book, you can tell the splash pages, there's no gutter loss. Let's look at a couple of more pages here. Just like this splash page. Again, if anything, I think mine up here has a little bit of more gutter loss than the new printing. Uh, one thing I noticed, I remember when getting the this one here, uh, the original printing came out in 2014 and it sold out within less than a year. And I remember that being the first time thinking, Oh man, this is going to be a hobby that uh, collectors are going to get into because that book shouldn't have sold out. Most of the time, they stayed in there. Every once in a while, a book would sell out. And sometimes books got liquidated. But for some reason, I remember this and Wolverine and the X-Men standing out as the books that sold out out of nowhere. Nobody saw it coming. More vibrant colors in the new printing as opposed to the original printing. But yeah, that was, that was the year that I was like, oh, I got to start ordering these day of just in case. Again, original printing, new printing. So 
I think the new printing has uh, less of a gutter loss right there in, in these pages here in the middle than the original printing. Let's look in the back really quick. Okay, here we are in the back, and I think they are equal as far as gutter loss um, on both of these pages. So that kind of gives you an idea of the differences. And of course, the paper quality, because I'm going to be asked about that. Honestly, they feel the same. Can't believe I'm feeling paper on videos. Ask 15 year old Omar what he was going to be doing in his 40s. But there you have it. They are identical as far as the paper quality. This episode is sponsored by CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off cover price. And for you minties, Cheap Graphic Novels is renting a special promotion. If you're a first-time customer, let them know you were referred by Near Mint Condition at the checkout, and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. That was the contents of the book, the build of the book, and the page count. Let me know in those comments down below if you are picking this up, if you've never read it, if you are going in blind or if you already bought the complete collections and wanted to upgrade or if you're a collector of omnis and want to get both versions love to know those comments down below please don't forget to hit that like subscribe button any other questions that i was not able to answer in this video please leave those questions down below and remember this is one of the grand prizes that i will be giving away on the guess the 300th marvel masterwork contest that we have going and that ends tonight at 8 p.m eastern standard time so get those guesses in there in those comments on that video that came out last saturday and remember if it's classy and cool it must be uncanny x-force <laughs>